Hi again. Uh, here we are to talk about float. You know, float deserves a lot of discussion. So, um, and it takes a little practice to get used to because um, it kind of has its own rules um, and interacts with other objects in kind of a weird way. So, let's do a little more practice with it. So, here I have an empty HTML document. Well, it's empty except for one div called main. Okay. And what I want to do is add a couple more divs here. And I'll give each one of these the class name box. Okay, just something convenient. So there's one div. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy it a bunch of times. So what do I have there? I have six. Why don't we copy all six of these and make 12? Okay, so I got 12 of these guys, right? So what I want to do is I want to create a grid. And each one of these boxes will be a little square on the grid. Okay, and we'll do it with float. Okay, so what do we want to do? Um, let's make main, um, let's make it, uh, give it a width of 600 pixels and uh, margin auto to put it in the middle, okay? And then let's give each box a width of um, 200 pixels, right? Because maybe I want them to do three across, right? So four rows of three. So if this is 600 and these are 200, right, then I should have three across, right? Um, and then I'm going to make a little problem here, right? So I'm going to add a margin on these guys, and we'll give them each 10 pixels of margin, okay? So that's going to create a problem. Maybe you can predict what that problem is going to be right now. And then I'll give each one of these boxes a... Um, I already gave them a width. Why don't we also give them a height? Now, normally, I would want to to let the content of the box set the height. And I'll do that in another example because that will bring up its own issues, right? So I'm just trying to keep things simple for now. But uh, why don't we give this guy a height of 200 and then maybe a background color also so we can see him. Why don't we just make him red? It'll make him really obvious to see. And then uh, why don't we give main a background color too just so we can see it. So let's give it a background color of, let's go with beige again. And um, maybe we'll give it a border, too. How about that, right? One pixel solid uh, black. Okay, so there we go. So main should be in the middle. It should be 600 pixels wide. It should be beige. It should have a, a border, right? And then I've got 12 boxes that are 200 by 200 with a 10 pixel margin, and they're red. So let's save all that. And then uh, let me go get this example drag it in there, and now you can see here's my beige box, um, and then there's my 12 boxes, right? So if I scroll there like this, and you can see I've got the 10 pixels margin between each one, right? Okay, but they're not arranged in a grid, right? I want them to go one, two, three, one, two, three, right? So what we'll do is with the boxes here, um, we'll add float. So I'll say float left, okay? And then I'll save that, and I'll refresh. And now two things happen. The box is aligned in two columns, and the outer wrapper, the beige box, collapsed. And you can tell by the border. So this isn't really a line. Really, it's a border around a one-pixel tall box, right? Because remember, the outer box doesn't recognize the floated elements. Okay, so let's fix that first. Now, if you recall from the last video, um, the way I fixed it, you can do the same technique here. So you can try that on your own. See if you can do that. And then I'll do it here, you know, so you can continue watching or pause the video, right? Okay, so the way I fixed this in the last video is inside main right here. So before it closes, I added another div, gave it class... Um, you can give it any name you want. I'll call it class clear, right? And then what I'll do is up here, I'll define class clear with the property clear both, okay? And so that'll fix half of our problem. So let's go back here and refresh. And now you can see that the box has to wrap around the invisible div at the bottom now because this and this div has to clear the floats. Okay, so it stays down here. It has to be underneath them. And then this guy has to wrap around. <coughs> okay, so now we have another problem. 
that these boxes don't fit and obviously there's not enough space here you can see that this box is wider than the space available why because the boxes are 200 pixels plus the 10 pixels margin on each side so they're actually um, 240 pixels wide right and this one's 240 so that makes this space you know um, I don't know less than less than 200 right um, so what do we do? Well, there's a couple things we can do, right? I can either make the container wider, right? So this would be, if each one was now 220 and I did 220 times three, then it would have to be 660 wide, right? So I'll change that. And then now they all fit. If the outer column was meant to be 600 and it had to be 600, then I'll have to shrink the width of these boxes. So instead of 200 if they have an extra 20 pixels like 10 margin on the left and right then they would have to be 180 okay the height doesn't have to change because that doesn't really affect us here but I could do this and then now I've got 600 from here to here um, actually I'd say that was 602 including the border but uh, that's 600 right and then you know um, and then these guys can be you know 180 plus the the 20 pixels of margin right Okay, let me show you one more trick for this too. Um, you know, another way to look at this is using calc. And calc is a really cool property. I'll hit on this again later. Um, you can do math with this in CSS. Normally CSS doesn't have any functions, but this is one function that it does have. And so what I'm doing here is I'm, I'm writing um, a formula here inside calc to say like, hey, calculate the width as 200 minus 20 pixels. Right. And what's nice about calc is, you know, if this if this margin, like if I wanted to change this to, let's say, one M instead of 10 pixels, then I could change this to two M's. Right. And what I'm doing here is I'm actually I'm mixing the units. So this is pixels and this one's M's. But, you know, CSS is happy to mix the units inside calc. OK. So I've got one M a margin on the left and right. So I got to subtract two M's a margin from my width of 200 to get the, uh, the size of the box, right? And then everybody fits, right? So the M is a little bigger than 10 pixels, right? It's the size of the font. So it's probably like 16 or 18. Anyway, so hopefully that's helpful for you and shows you how to do a basic grid layout using float.